her. The day I was in the doctor's office, and it was like a battle at the OK Corral. She told me uh, her diagnosis, and I just looked at her, and I said, I didn't crack a smile or anything. I just looked at her and said, okay. But then I said, I'm already the healed in the name of Jesus. And she looked at me like, she's not responding or anything like that. <laughs> she's not saying anything, you know. But you know what? I already know. I'm healed. And then she said, but you know what? For your eyes, we have uh, uh, we have caught it right, right on time. But see, at first she wanted to get a reaction. You know, to see what my response was going to be. But I just said, you know, I am the heal. Before I even went in there, I said, well, I am the heal. And I believe that. I believe what he did for me 2,000 years ago. You know, even though the, uh, the, the attacks are coming. You know, they're coming like here and there. But we're, we're standing on what he said. You know, in all areas. And our family has been through some, some different things here lately. But we know what he says, and we're standing on the word. Amen. I won't give you all details, but we're standing on the word. And then, So, we should be asking, did Jesus take, okay. Matthew 8, 17 says, Jesus himself took our firmness and bore our sicknesses. So therefore, don't wonder if you have the right kind of faith to receive your healing. Take the focus off of my faith. Me, I, and just rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Mark 5, 28 reads, For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be well. Now, let me get back to my eyes. There was a point when I couldn't look at this paper and righteously read it. You know, but Jesus is good. I can stand here and read this paper. You know, I can read this paper because I say every night, I am healed every night. I am healed. Every part of my body is healed in the name of Jesus. You know, every night you know your body is, renews itself. So you talk to your body every night and tell it what it, it better do. You tell it what it better do because it, it will do, if you allow it, whatever they, it want to do. But we tell it what to do, you know. All right? So that's my thing at night. You get in line. I talk to it. These eyes, you healed. I see perfectly. My blood pressure is perfect over 120, over 80. I don't care what the doctor said. You get in line with what I said. And you have to continue. And then when I went yesterday, my blood pressure had went down. Praise God. I'm telling you, you got to keep on talking to them. When the woman with the issue of the blood heard that Jesus was coming by her village, she said to herself, I only, I, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be well. She was convinced that Jesus would heal her. If, you, if you're sick, convince yourself that Jesus is your healer. And that by his stripes, you, you are healed. We don't have to convince God of that. We don't have to beg him. God, please heal me. Please heal me, please heal me. Uh-uh. I used to do that. I'm not saying that, you know, before I found out differently that he's already done everything that he's going to do and all I have to do is receive it. Hallelujah. But yeah, I was begging too. Heal me. <laughs> you know, we don't have to convince God because he is not the one who needs to be persuaded. Because his blessings are already on us. So there is, this is, so this is the reason we confess his word, to convince ourselves, not God, to persuade our hearts, not his. He's already said in his words, by his stripes you are healed. And Satan will try to steal your victory, okay? He will come against you with lies and fears. And cause you to be conscious of your failures, your weaknesses, your symptoms in areas such as your health. But we are not trying to be healed. We are already healed because God's word declares it that, again, by his stripes, we are healed. We cannot earn the blessings of God. We receive them 
by receiving God's love and grace towards us. If we receive the greatest blessing, salvation, simply by simply believing that Jesus did, did it all for us and not by working for it, what makes us think that the other lesser blessings can be obtained by our works? You know? In Mark eleven twenty four, 24, it says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Believe that you receive them. That's what it says. Believe that you receive them. The Bible also tells us that we already have whatever we are praying for because we are already blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ. And that's Ephesians 1, 3. Romans 12, 3 says, God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Our measure of faith grows when we feed and use it. Now we got to feed it. And we feed it by, by what? The Word. Each time we hear or read God's Word, we are feeding our faith. When we confess God's Word and expect good things to happen for us, we are using it. And the more we use it, the more our faith grows. There is no particular level of faith, of a level your faith or our faith must reach before God gives us what we may be asking for. Our faith does not initiate God's giving. He's already given to, to you or us all things that pertain to life and godliness. His blessings are pressing on us already. Regardless of the level of faith we're at, he will respond. Jarius needed to go to, wanted uh, Jesus to go to his house to lay hands on his daughter, and Jesus did. The centurion only needed Jesus to speak a word for his servant to be healed, and Jesus did. He met both their expectations. So what makes you think he wants to uh, meet yours? So we are not uh, to fix our eyes on how much or how little faith we have. Fix our eyes on the one who loves us, who has already given us what we need. When we come to him, simply believe that he is waiting to meet your expectation. He will say to you, go your way. As you have as you have believed so let it be done for you regardless of the level of faith you, uh, you're at God will respond and meet your need so if you have a symptom or something going on keep looking unto Jesus see him taking that symptom of those circumstances and if I say symptoms upon your body he took it on the cross and say, Lord, I thank you that by your stripes I'm healed. I keep saying it, by his stripes I'm healed. As we keep looking to, into Jesus, our healer, that symptom will have to bow to his finished work. And if it's financial lack, what do you do? You keep looking unto Jesus Christ with a confident expectation that he will provide for us and deliver us from lack. We are to look to Jesus, look unto him the author and finisher of our faith. And soon we will be looking at our healing and our prosperity. Jesus is relaxed. Yeah, he's resting. While you're up there working and trying to make him do something, he's looking at you like, I done already did what I'm going to do. You can't do nothing to make me do nothing else because I've already done it. When Jesus calmed the raging storm, all the disciples were on the deck screaming. We perish. <laughs> All the while, Jesus was asleep in the bottom of the boat. He was kicked back at the bottom of the boat. The disciples were, disciples were running and crying for help. <laughs> but the word says, however, that the author and the finisher of faith was asleep on a pillow. There is no panic with Jesus. No panic. When Jesus heard that Lazarus was dying... We read, so when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. We may thought, think, well, was that a responsible action of Jesus? Jesus would have, why didn't he hurry to the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus? Why did he get up and quickly perform a miracle? Again, Jesus exemplifies rest. When we lift him up and we see how great he is and his love fills our heart, we too will be at rest. 
This restful faith causes our circumstances, whatever they may be, to change. It causes the diseases to be healed, the sicknesses, sicknesses to go. Jesus is relaxed in every situation. Example was the feeding of the 5,000. And it reads in Luke 9, 12, 17 through 17. Late in the afternoon, the 12 disciples came to him and said, sending crowds away to the nearby, dear, nearby villages and farms so that they can find food and lodging for the night. There is nothing to eat here in this deserted place. This is the disciples now. But Jesus said, you feed them. Impossible, they protested. The disciples, <laughs> we can't do that. We can't. Okay, we can't do that. But he said, feed them. And he says, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Or are you expecting us to go and buy some food for this whole crowd? For there were about 5,000 men there. Just tell them to sit down. This is what Jesus said. On the ground in groups of about 50 each, Jesus replied. So the people all sat down. Jesus took the five loaves and fish, looked up towards heaven, and asked God's blessing on the food. Breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread and fish to the disciples to give to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted. We all ate as much as we wanted. We all get as much as we want from our Lord Jesus Christ. And they picked up the 12 baskets of leftovers. And whatever we ask, there's more. There's more. Whatever we ask, he's already done it. Jesus didn't panic. He took the five loaves and two fish, looked up towards heaven, and asked God's blessing on the food. He spoke and received. He was at rest.